everybody again. Uh, so nice to see you all. And um, I hope you had a nice week, a nice weekend. It was beautiful. Um, and I hope you guys were able to get out. I know Jackson let us know that he actually went to the Bosque. And so that's really cool. Um, got to actually see some of these things that we talked about and that those visuals um, really helped me out. So I didn't yeah. actually go to the Bosque. I said I would go to the Bosque this weekend. Oh, you would. Okay, cool. Well, that'll work out great because we're going to still be talking about that area. Mm -hmm. so that's perfect. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, so um, what I'd like you all to do is we're going to share out and we're going to have you guys do the same thing we did last time. And so I'd like you to kind of um, talk a little bit about how you created your model and um, just something about your model. So anything you want to say about your 3D model referring to the Rio Bravo. Um, so would anybody like to start? I'm gonna have Jackson go last, but can we have somebody start and then we'll popcorn you guys from there. So you'll pick somebody afterwards. So raise your hand if you'd like to start. And Sarah's looking too. Who's gonna be, all oh, right, uh, Jonathan. Okay, go ahead and unmute and hold it up so we can see it there on your screen. Oh, you're muted. muted. There you go. Um, me and Adi actually did this one together. You and who? Sorry. Me and Ariana did this together. Okay. Oh wow! And what is what did you make it out of? Um, we made the river out of Play-Doh. I'm gonna take. Hold on. I'm gonna take a. Uh, Picture through the screen, is that weird? I know. Okay, that is really cool. Okay, and what else? We actually got real sand from outside and we cut up some little trees to use as bushes and we got sticks for trees and put Play-Doh on top of them. So you use natural resources and um, kind of some man-made resources then, right? You have a mixture there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that was that on purpose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we... All right, uh, Ariana, you want to add uh, anything else about the process or what you guys were thinking about as you were building this? Um, well, I liked how we used like stuff from outside to use it. Like we did use some rocks to indicate there are rocks in there. We did put a turtle in there um these are on there so it was really fun to do um i like doing it <laughs> nice. that's really good do you, anything else you guys want to share about your model it's really good i can see that you guys put a lot of thought into some of the things that we talked about and you saw and then you made it your own anything last you'd like to mention about it um let's see um i don't think so yeah, there's was nothing hard? easy. Huh? Was it was hard kind of easy? hard. It was kind of hard to make like the river to make it actually look mm -hmm. like a river instead of just like a straight line. Yeah, we had to kind of curve it to make it look like a river. Ah, you you were thinking about how we talked like that it does this, right? It's not straight. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'm glad that you guys have that. Uh, don't get rid of it yet because we're going to be adding to it. So um, that's a great model to start with for today. So really awesome. Thank you guys for sharing. Can you pick on popcorn another student, please? Audrey, I guess. Okay. Um, so... I'm gonna turn off my video real quick. Um, I'm gonna go into the living room and okay. show it. I guess we could try to think about how big Audrey's house is by how long it takes her to get to her living room. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
that's so cool, you guys. It's just interesting to see the different changes already from, I've seen Jackson since it's on the computer. All right, does she rejoin us yet? Yeah, okay. Oh, yes. <gasps> wow, hold it very still, okay? <laughs> Tell me about this. Okay. Um... So it first started with just like a random list of the things I needed. <laughs> um, and then I had to figure out like how I would even make any of this. I think my favorite part uh, was making the Sandia Mountains <laughs> um, using foam. Mm -hmm. I really like that part. So um, you, you have a lot of layers going on here. Um, I'm noticing that you put the mountains up higher like for elevation to, to show that not everything is sitting at the same ground level. You really emphasize that here. Yeah. All right. Another one of my favorites is probably the river. Yeah, let's see. Oh, wow. So tell me what the most challenging or most exciting part about building this model was for you. Um, let's see. I think the most challenging would be the mountains. Uh, <laughs> it took me a long time to kind of make it look like a mountain. Um, That's amazing. I like the visuals, you guys are really literal. <laughs> so much. <Yeah>. <laughs> So your parents must be super proud and love this and they're going to have it as a decoration, right? <laughs> you guys should take some, um, uh, Audrey and of course, Jonathan and Ariana, we'd love some pictures, some yeah. like more close up pictures so that we could see, um, yeah. your projects mm -hmm. better too. I've tried to snap some yeah. pictures here in zoom, but you know, a picture would be yeah. really awesome. And because we're going to add to these, um, a before and after would be really cool, right? So if you guys can take one now of all them, and then we're gonna do an after as well. Um, Cause we're gonna change. So uh, mom and dad cannot move your designs. So just tell mom and dad, no, we're not done yet. <laughs> That's really awesome, Audrey. Really, really good job. Can you uh, pick on someone to go next? Um, Layla? All right, Layla, you're up. Okay, I need to flip camera. Okay, so this is mine. Um, wow, I don't know why I don't have I don't have her on the main screen, Sarah. Is there? Oh, oh, there we go. Now, okay. Oh my! Wow. And what did you use to make yours? Talk to me about it. Okay, so this is cardboard um, from a box. And then this is actually like doggy bags, um, but it worked for like moving it around and the texture I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, right, oh, cool. The dirt, for the dirt, I cut strips of a paper bag and crumbled them up and then taped them to the box. Um, for the trees, I took uh, leaves from outside and um, sticks, and then con and then I connected two toilet paper rolls and hot glue it to that. And then that's my owl made out of perler beads. Oh this, wow! This is oh fox. that is so cute. <laughs> and this little den for it. Um, there's a little snake over there. Kind of looks like a snake. This and is you make all those. Wow. Yeah. Um, flowers, mm -hmm. tail, and then I have a turtle right here. Uh huh. In the water, perfect. Yeah. The lizard, a lizard, a road runner next to the tree, and then I have a bunny, and then a duck in the water. Oh my goodness! And those take a lot of time to make. I've made those before. So you made all of those in a week? <laughs> um, no, I actually made all of them last night. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wow, that is really, really cool. So take a photo of that 
and don't move it. So hopefully this can stay there for a week. Is it I able to- I have never stay? been able to finish one of those, let alone like seven in a single night. I know, I think we should applaud you for that. That is amazing. Anything else- Right here, because that's, that's a lot of patience right there. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, that is really cool. Anything you want to say about the process of making this? Anything that stood out to you, you enjoyed, was hard? I really enjoyed making the trees. I just kind of went with it. Well, that's really cool. I love the creativity, you guys, and how different these all are, but they have such a similar message. And I can see everything that you saw in the video in these models. So, so I'm just blown away. That's amazing. Okay, uh, who would you like to popcorn next? Um, let's go Naomi. All right, Naomi, you're up. Okay, there it is. I'll just move my computer. That would probably be easier than holding it. Never mind, I will hold it because it's a little <laughs> flimsy and quite small. But as you see, Aww. it's a little like pop up card. It's kind of hard for you to see the whole thing. Oh, wow. No, I can. How cool. So tell them everything that you have in there. And well, I see the labels too. Yeah. That's like, um, what are they called? Cottonwoods because we learned about those. So we needed to add them. Then, like, all the shrubs and stuff we learned in the video. All the animals and then some other ones I looked up that would be around that area like jackrabbits or spotted towhies and there's a little owl in the tree but yeah just oh, like everything yeah, we learned is. in the video. <laughs> oh that is so cool really really what was your favorite part about making that or what's the reaction you have? Uh I don't know I like making pop-up cards so I thought it'd be fun. Yeah, it, it was fun. Everyone's kind of taking what they like to do, right? Like, this is what I like to do. And it's so unique. And that's what I love about having freedom to make, you know, what you see, right? Like, this is how I see it. So it's awesome. Thank you so much. All right, who is next? Uh, I guess. Mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up really bad. I'm so sorry, but... Shaya, or, sorry, I'm really bad at like pronouncing names. It's Shay. Oh, I was close. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, what do you have? Let's see it. We went to White Sands, so I actually only had three days to make this. Oh, yeah, because you were with us last week. Yeah, but I have some trees, and uh, I have the plants is a butterfly plant, and it's a salt bush. Oh, wow. Year grass. Uh, there's a turtle. These are supposed to be baby trees. Those are cattails. Oh, my goodness. What What is the brown made out of? So the, like... I paper mache this. I mean, we painted it. Uh huh. There's a frog. It's supposed <laughs> to be a crane. Oh, the crane. Yes, we see that. Um, mm -hmm. Upland, there's a mm -hmm. mountain room. There's a road on the the road room. You guys have so much detail. You got directions? Oh, good. My favorite thing is probably the sandbar thing. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, the direction thing. I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a comment on your video that or your um, model that I'm noticing which is really cool is the fact that your river is big and small, like you had it flooding in places. Yeah. And that is so accurate on how it would have been. So I really like that you show that, that flooding happening and the sandbars. Yeah. So where, where, where do you live? Because I didn't get to meet you last time. So just give me a little, who are you and where are you from and what grade are you in? I'm Shay. I live in Albuquerque, Mexico, and I'm in grade seven. All right, well, I'm Allison and I'm your educator. So it's nice to, to formally kind of meet you. That's awesome. 
Very well done. So let me have you, I think we have Layla left and who else besides Jackson? Is that it, right? I think we got them all. Sarah, I'm looking at you. So- And I think Layla, Layla, you already went, right? Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Layla already went. So Jackson, Jackson is our last one. Shade, that was amazing. And I'm going to give it props to some of your parents too, because some of these projects look really big and like they're (laughs) taking up a very large space in your house as well. So make sure you tell your parents, thank you for letting you use such a large space for really cool projects. And you can tell them this Allison says, we need it for well, at least one more week. (laughs) Yes. So you're going to have to leave it there. It's just the way it goes. Okay. So, so yeah, so it looks like Let's have Jackson. Oh, um, um, I can't screen share, Sarah. Can you add that feature for some reason? So I can, I want to screen share his while he shares it just because it's. You should, you should be good now. Okay, cool. Um, there you are, Jackson. All right. Can you guys see that? Mm-hmm. Okay, Jackson, talk to us about your model here. Um, well, one second, I just have to get my cat away. No, go. Shoot. All right. Um, so for my 3D model, I made a mandala. A mandala is a circle that shows everything is connected. Um, in Sanskrit, mandala literally means circle. Um, and the circular design represents that life is never ending and everything is connected. And I figured a mandala is perfect because it shows everything is connected, which I have been focusing on. And if a river goes dry, the plants will die. If the plants die, the herbivores will have to leave because they don't have any food. The herbivores leave, the carnivores will have to leave too. Um, so, what? Um, one second. Oh, did he step out for a minute? (laughs) Oh, Sarah, you're muted. Yes, I knew that. I should know that. That was a rookie move. I said, I wonder if his Wi-Fi um, kind of went out. out on him a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, just to kind of really quick to sum up um, Jackson's here, when I was looking at some of his notes, he kind of has a good segue to what we're going to talk about today because he really talks about how everything is connected and how if one thing is gone, it affects multiple things and not all at once, but after time it will. And you'll see an effect right away of at least one species connected to another one, but then you'll see those multiple effects. And so what's kind of really cool about this is that's where we're going to um, go today. Hey, Jackson, you left Sorry, us there. For my okay. uh, router stopped working for a second. Um, yeah, go ahead. go ahead and continue. So yeah, I made a mandala and I will have the river at the center of my mandala, as you can see on the diagram that I made, because it shows that everything expands outward from the river. Um, it, With everything connected, it gives the boost to the rest of the ecosystem because everything can help everything else. And, but like, that can be like good, but it can also be bad because there are fewer problems But any problem that do happen means that that will have a more devastating effect. Um, And to, I'm not entirely done yet. And I don't really, I'm not going to finish this by the end of the, this class or the last class. I actually really wanna keep doing it into the summer or late summer, because I didn't want to be restrained to making the mandala from what I could see in the winter um, for what I could make do with. Um, So for, uh, sorry. Instead of just making do with what I can find in the winter, I'll find like 
better, more vibrant colored things that I can use in the summer. Like I can leave space on the mandala for cottonwood leaves and cattail fluff and just finding like dead and frozen cottonwood leaves and cattail fluff and stuff. Um, And making the mandala, I'm gonna draw the outline. That's just like a first draft, the diagram. To make it, I'm gonna draw the outline of my mandala on the poster board. And then I'm gonna take like magazine clippings and uh, I'm gonna glue them to the board like inside the circle, like a beaver tail to represent beavers. And then uh, it would be like the animals that live in the river would be in the circle just next to the river. The ones that are close to the river, but not like in the river would be on the next circle, etc. So like the ones that are the plants and animals that are in more of an upland habitat would be in the last circle. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you, I show here like all of the green uh, lines are plants that I'll put in the uh, showed ring and the blue ones are uh, animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. Well, this is this is really amazing, uh, and and I like that you say you can expand on it because that's very true. We see things change, and we see different plants and animals depending on the seasons, and depending on what's going on around us. And so, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and stop screen sharing. Thank you, uh, Jackson, for letting me show this. By the way, uh, you guys all did such an amazing job, and I just love the critical thinking going on. And that really leads us to the lesson today. So what I'd like you guys to do is everyone put your models to the side if you have them so you don't bump into them with your elbows. And I'd like you to get your notebooks out. And I'd like you guys to write down Rio Monso. Okay, so this is going to be the title of our lesson today. And as I kind of hinted at, we're going to be adding to what you've done. And so Jackson, this is a nice segue. I was saying as you were off screen because of your router, <laughs> I was saying that what I love about your thought is you're saying everything is connected and that's exactly where we're going. And we're gonna see those connections and how those are changing. Um, and so Rio Monso is your title. So if everybody can get your piece of paper and pencil and write that down, and I'm gonna give you a definition of that which means tame river. So you remember how we talked about the river flowing wild and we talked about it, how it expands. We're gonna look at um, the video we're gonna see today is gonna focus on a tame. Go to your room. <laughs> Go, to your room. Go to your room. No, you guys stay in this room. <laughs> um, yeah, so funny. Yeah, so uh, tame river, okay. And remember the question I had you guys think about. I want you to write it down if you need to write it down again. And um, it's going to be how has the river land or habitats changed because of us? And the question is here in the chat box. So I want you to either write this question down, think about it, but you're going to answer it in using two things. You can write a full sentence or just two words, but I want you to really think for, I'm going to give you guys a minute or two to really think is how, what are the big two changes that you either you want to focus on, you're thinking about, um, what wasn't included in your Rio Bravo model, because those things are going to actually make their journey through the next two lessons we do together. Um, so again, we're building kind of a, uh, a roadmap here. So I'm gonna be quiet for about a minute and I'd like you to write down two things to answer that question. And when you are done, if you could circle the most important thing to you. So make it personal. I wanna know what you think is the most important that you wanna focus on that has changed.
okay. So if you're still writing, that's okay. Um, is there anyone that would kind of like to share? Um, how about you just share the one that you circled? Go ahead, Layla, I see your hand up. Um, personally, for me, I went to the Bosque like two months ago or something. But the thing that stood out to me most is people kept throwing trash and leaving cans and all that stuff. I'm gonna put your answers here in the chat as well. So trash. Yeah, that's really, that's really changed. And thinking about the ways that tr trash is connected, like Jackson kind of led us to think about the connection, right? Like who does it affect directly? And then who does it affect after that, right? It's not just a single person throwing a piece of trash, right? And then when we think about that, what are some of the solutions? So I want you to really kind of have that thought as we go through um, this next part and kind of have that as your center. All right, anyone else want to share one of the things that they wrote down? I'm looking around to see if I see any hands up. So, oh, uh, Jackson, go ahead. Um, so I chose, like, if a lot of people will hunt a lot around the Bosque or the Rio Grande or just hunt <laughs> and mm -hmm. that can well that's a good thing for some things because like you need crowd funding because if you have like too many of one species for example like at Yellowstone Park where they or not Yellowstone Park but someplace where they started killing wolves um then because the wolves were eating their uh, sheep and stuff the farmers killed the wolves and then because the wolves weren't there the deer who were sick and like old and frail didn't get eaten and just deer and no prey was being eaten only what they could hunt so then like then it was like overeating and then there was like no the plants were dying because they were constantly being eaten by the deer and other prey that would have normally been uh eaten by the wolves um, so then because they'd killed the wolves, the crops were now going away because there were too many deer. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, for example, in that case, hunting was a good thing because it would have stopped the, if they had, the wolves hunting was a good thing, but also you can over hunt and that's what happens to like the dodos and stuff where mm -hmm. they got, went extinct. Yeah, so kind of just to sum up what you're saying, un education to understand the difference, right, Jackson? So mm -hmm. hunting isn't a bad thing. We want to regulate it, but we need to know what the difference is. We need to be educated. And this all comes back to what we're doing right here in this classroom, right? We're mm -hmm. educating each other. You guys are educating me. I'm educating you. We're educating one another, right? And we're doing that. And when we're doing that, we're learning about a bigger perspective. When we learn about something, you guys are all old enough to have learned about um, like the Civil War, right? For example. So when we learn about that, oh, you guys all froze on me. Can you guys hear me? Oh, I can hear I feel you. like I froze there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you guys all froze on me. Um, but when we're learning about something, and you guys learn about it in a book, and we're looking learning about something like the Civil War, are we learning about it from what perspective, right? So what you guys are doing is you're gaining perspective of what others are saying, and you're seeing the perspective of what they're building. So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop you there, Jackson, because we do have a lot to get to today. Thank you so much for sharing. And those of you that didn't get a chance, email me afterwards. Um, and so I want to hear some of your other reactions, but I'd like to get our video started. So what I'd like you guys to now do is just like last week, we're going to follow along with the video. You guys will be adding a lot of new terms. And you remember how you drew your Rio Bravo model in your old, uh, the uh, last, last week's video? You can build off of that if you want, if that is how you learn, you're a visual learner, because we're going to look at that 
So you can build off of that, or you can just write down some of the new things that you're going to learn about, the new vocabulary words. So however you want to do that, are there any questions on, on that? So you're going to just kind of follow along. I'll pause it occasionally so you guys can get the full definitions in. Um, but however you want to do it, so um, just be prepared to uh, write, write down some new stuff you're going to learn and be thinking about your models because we're going to be adding to them. So without further ado, uh, go ahead and stop me if there's any questions, but I'm going to go ahead and screen share now. Let's see, get started on our video. Okay, this is going to be part two. All right. Make sure my volume's up. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm back here with Allison, and we have the Rio Bravo activity out in front of us. And we're about to go into the Rio Monzo activity. But before we do that, we would like you to get out your pen, paper, pencils, colored pencils, so that you can work along with us during the activity. Okay, so human impact um, is a way that we have changed the environment to meet a specific need. Important word is change. All right, so to get started, we want to travel back in time a little bit and think about some of the first humans that lived in the middle Rio Grande Valley, this area where the river is. So who was here a long, long time ago? Or, you know, our current communities that we live in. I read about there was a lot of Native American groups coming here, right? So indigenous people to the land. We have um, a term that we like to use to identify them as ancestral Puebloans. So these are the ancestors to the person. I'll give you guys a minute to write that down. Ancestral Puebloans. These are the ancient Native American culture. There's many different periods of the ancestral Puebloans. So we're talking about period five. Uh, Leia, Leila, I see your hand up. Go ahead. I was wondering if you could possibly put uh, the words in the chat for those that take a little bit longer to. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, um, I may have. Hey, Sarah, are you on with us? Do you think you could do that since I'm screen sharing? That's a little bit. I missed you. I stepped out. What do you need me to oh, do? And I'll totally uh, do it. Could you uh, help so the students can get all the definitions? Can you put them in the chat when they show up? Just since Oh, I'm yeah, thinking. sure. No problem. So um, this one is kind of longer, so I stopped on it. Um, and so uh, I was just explaining the ancestral Puebloans have many periods. There's Pueblo one, two, three, four, and five. So this is the most recent one we're talking about. So we're looking at the year 1600 to present when those cultures kind of just started to make larger communities, larger areas that they were settling. And they were really settling here and up into um, Southern Colorado. So this is kind of the ancestral Puebloan area. Um, and so that's who we're talking about, but we're looking at the last period, uh, which is 1600 to present, but they were here um, way before this time. Um, but this is kind of when they just started to really make those communities 
next to the river. So that's that's what we're talking about there. And thank you so much, Sarah. I'm going to try to pause it when we get to the vocab words. Thank you. Me. Oh, no, that's a that's a great idea. Thank you. For yeah, that. it's perfect. I'm pretty quick. I should be able to type it in. You shouldn't have to stop it for too long. OK, thank you so much, Sarah. No problem. So this is just an example. Um, if you've ever been to Chaco Culture National Historical Park, it is near Gallup kind of, I guess, area. Um, and this is just kind of shows you like old adobe ruins that we can still see. And we have a lot of these around New Mexico, kind of the really cool cultural components. So if you're really interested in that cultural um, aspect and how that has added to the changes of the land, um, this is kind of a neat um, way to go and learn about this kind of stuff. So. I'm going to add something real quick if you want to pause it about Chaco. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. If, um, and if you go in the summer on Fridays, and of course, I'm not sure with COVID, but they do a night sky presentation, which is really cool. And so you can actually see probably more stars than I've ever seen in my entire life, but they tell the history of how um, stars and planets and the sun and the moon were used to tell time and when... Um, when planting seasons came around and things like that. So it's a really cool opportunity, not only to see the actual houses, but to be able to really experience some of the culture. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So awesome. It is so awesome. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have to take some of our cottonwood trees out um, in order to have a home because I need room to live. So what you guys are going to notice here that I'm going to do a lot, um, and I'm just going to mention it right here, is I have to remove some of the cottonwood trees and things that you guys have maybe had on your models because in order to make room to build something we have to remove something else so that kind of goes back to the good and the bad we have to remove something to put something down so you're going to notice i periodically will have to take trees out and shrubs out and so kind of be thinking about that with your own models so um, I'm going to actually remove some, but not all, because I don't think I need to remove all of them. Um, but I'll place them in different places here along the river, and I removed a few cottonwood trees to do so. That's great, Allison, and, and I would like to note that as you place yourself close to the river where you would like to live, because it's a good place to be close to water, um, you're, you're actually pretty close to the river there, so we'll see what happens when the river does its natural thing. Yeah, I'm kind of worried because we said tame river, which makes me think that I don't know if it's going to be in the same place. All right, so moving forward in time a little bit, um, we had a certain group of people that came to this area called the Spanish settlers. And those people were here before it was the United States. Okay, so Spanish settlers, um, and they, they came again around the 1600s, so that same time that we talked about that last Pueblo 5 period, um, and they brought over 7,000 livestock, and um, well, well, you guys can read it, but the, um, this is just kind of showing you that another culture is coming in. And so now we're gonna have that kind of mixture. So when you think about New Mexico today, you can really see a large Spanish culture and a large native culture, um, kind of that we now call a mixture of the culture of the Southwest. And so this is kind of when those cultures first started to come together. Um, and it has a lot to do with the area we're talking about, the middle Rio Grande, right where you guys all live. So this is such an important part of our history here. And they came and they found this land as a really kind of ideal place to live because it was much like their home back in Spain, had a similar environment, we call it an arid landscape. Arid meaning that it doesn't get a lot of rain. We don't get a lot of rain in this area. But they said, oh, we, we can farm this land. We could 
So now we're talking about farming and agriculture and um, the main three things that the ancestral Puebloans farms were corn, beans, and squash. Um, and so, Jackson, Jackson, I see you have your hand up. I'm gonna um, wait because we do have um, a lot of the video left. So um, can you save that till the end? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome, thank you. because they're not using the same sort of grasses depending on what they're farming. And we might see that these animals try to move a little bit further away from all these humans too. So I've got a question. Do yeah. these homes look the same and are they using the same materials as these homes? That's a great question, Allison. So no, I think a lot of these homes were were built out of wood, okay. which means that they probably need what to build these homes? Trees. So yeah. we may actually need to cut down some more trees. Yeah. Um, they might have come over here to this area. Yeah. Wow. We're really changing the land already. That's really a, amazing how yeah. far this looks. We have changed the land, but yet you'll see the river hasn't changed so no. much, right? No, the river's still free to meander mm -hmm. as it pleases, but that might cause a problem for some of these people that live close to it. Yeah. So let's imagine that there's a big flood that comes. So it's a year with a lot of rain, a lot of snow melt comes down, a big flood happens, and what could happen to these people? They could lose their house and their fields. Yes. So oh, this house and this field goes away, but you know what? Humans are pretty resilient, and they might say, "All right, I'm going to rebuild Give me that that, <laughs> that field. Um, I'm going to rebuild right here." So we still have more people living in the area. Mm -hmm. So you're noticing that because of the way the river was naturally flooding, fields were getting flooded out, and that was a problem. So we're noticing after enough people had to move their fields, something needed to happen. And that is going to come to what our river looks like today. This is one of the big reasons because we needed to farm and because agriculture was such an important part of living, growing and thriving for us to survive here. Right, so you may have, you may notice that there's something a little different about our model right now. And that is that we've added these blue lines onto our model to show you an example of what acequias are. So when we talk about these Spanish settlers who came in, they also brought with them a system to uh, bring water to their crops and their farms called acequias. You may not have heard the term. So if you live um, kind of, so I live in Bosque Farms and I have a ditch right behind my house and you can still see there are many ditches and acequias. They're still used today um, for us. It's a way that we use water to regulate it for what we need. And it all, as you can see from our model here, is directly attached to the river or today also to the levees, which you'll learn about in a minute. Probably seen that all over ditches. I was going to say, is it like a ditch? Yeah, the ditches that carry water. Mm -hmm. And they're usually a bit smaller than the big ditches that are alongside the river okay. that kind of run through the neighborhood. And this is where people are able to irrigate their land. Okay, so 
there's water in the ditches and they get the water is that why we have to catch in the river right yes so the water is coming down from the north this is the direction that the water is flowing the acequias usually tap into the river at some point the water flows along two different um, farms and it also comes back to the river so any water that isn't used goes back to the river so it's kind of like they just channel the river out and bring it back wow so we really do use the river just seeing this model like this so you may notice that our model has changed a bit all well, right. What do you see that's different? Um, okay, the biggest thing for me is the river. Uh, it used to be really zigzag, and now it's pretty straight. Right. So, yeah, so the river looks straighter. And the, the main reason that we're showing how that happens right now is because of these white lines. And these white lines here demonstrate the levee. So a levee is a, is, a, is a small hill and berms is built to help manage the river. So, so the levees um, came over around the 1800s and they're kind of the first way to regulate where the river goes. So you'll notice today the river won't flood really outside of those levees. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the video. I just wanted to pause so you guys can get that definition there. And we still have them today. They look very different um, than they did when they were first being uh, put in. So that it doesn't flood on the other side of it. So as people were getting flooded out because they lived in a floodplain, oh. they started to build these levees to help protect them from the river in case it was to flood. The river wouldn't go over the levee and it would protect their land. So we couldn't have any houses in here because they would get flooded. Nope, not really. Yeah, so I noticed we have all the houses. And also, I noticed there's no sandbars. And those formed where the river changed direction. And now these are almost like a giant sandbar. Great. Because it's protecting, yeah. because it protects the land outside. Is this still part of the riparian habitat, even though it's outside of the levee? Some of this would be, yes. Okay. So it's, you know, maybe hard for us to demonstrate all of it, but so you can still have riparian habitat. Well, you can still have some similar habitat outside of the levee. Okay. But they're not going to have the same amount of access to water now, right? Right. It's like different soil because it doesn't have um, that natural flooding like we used to have. So it's probably changing the whole soil and everything. It's a really good point. Um, and, and, you know, I, I point out that these cottonwoods happening, they can't really be anywhere far from the river now because they need a wet, sandy soil to survive. Right, because they don't have the roots that underneath the ground that we talked about last time. Right, so we wouldn't see those up here. But you, you might see some upland shrubs still in this area. But, you know, if, if you're in areas like Albuquerque where you are able to enter into the Bosque, which is the cottonwood forest, and you see the bike path, it goes up on a hill. You can kind of those are the levees, and you can kind of see that there's there's not a lot of cottonwood trees on the other side of the levee, and so it's like all of this. So it kind of pushed that riparian area into a smaller place. So Allison, you were talking about how the levees and how things look different and how things have changed. And we, we mentioned how the levees were really important to help keep protect homes from flooding. Well, some other things that happened during this time back in the 1900s, which went really wasn't that long ago, no. where um, the Army Corps of Engineers, so part of the government, came in to help because so flooding was such an issue in this area. People didn't know what to do. So they said, all right, well, we're going to help you. We're going to build these really strong levees to build these walls to make sure that the water doesn't flood over. But we're also going to make sure that we control the river a little bit more with something called jetty dams. You might have seen if you're ever down in the Bosque or you're hiking near the river and you see these weird cross metal structures, I guess it's upside down, but big metal structures with wires all over them. Sometimes they're 
back away from the river a little bit and you can see them fully exposed. Have you guys seen these? You can just raise your hand if you recognize these. If you walk along the river, um, really near the nature center, you can kind of see these. Um, a lot of them are still there, but these are the jetty jacks. And sometimes they're right up on the banks. And what they do is they would they would catch debris if there was any flooding and kind of make an immediate barrier so that the flooding wouldn't go past the jetty jacks. And actually, sometimes they're, I think they're kind of lined like this. So that if the river went to flood, it would catch any sticks or logs, and then that would, that would create a wall and keep the river inside. I have a question. Yeah. So since we have these levees that work so well now that the river doesn't flood up here, do we need these anymore in today's time? That's a good question, Allison. So, so when they were installed was about the same time where they were building these long levee systems. So it's kind of like they came together, but now that we have these levees, sure, they might protect it, but there's one more thing that really helps control the river that exists today, and you have them in your hand. Dams. Dams. So what does a dam do? Mm, it kind of dams, it, it, it keeps the water from flowing somewhere else, so you can kind of keep the water in one place. That's great. So we have two major dams that we want to clean out on our river. One way north of Albuquerque is called Pochity Dam. And then one way down south of us is called Elephant Butte. And both of these dams are also reservoirs. So when you have a dam, you have a big wall that stops the flow that we're able, humans are able to control, right? And then behind that is, is a bunch of water that is stored in a reservoir. So these dams really help us control the water flow between we can say, oh, we want to let out some more, oh, we want to stop the water. So in that way, these levees maybe aren't even as important anymore, these jetty jacks aren't as important, because now that we have dams here to like hold control, and now you see that tame river, right? It is so tame because we choose how much water comes out, when it comes out, and that really controls the flow and it doesn't allow it to meander as much. Wow, so we really do use the water in more ways than we think about. So Allison, I know we just talked a lot about how we changed the, the function and the structure of the river, right? Now it's a lot more straight, doesn't meander, but there's other ways that we've impacted this ecosystem as humans as well. Yeah. Can you can you think of something something that happens? Um, sometimes humans cause it in an environment when where they live. Um, yeah. So something I see a lot are fires. I see a lot of fires. People burn weeds with things in their backyard. Um, and sometimes I see fires on days where it's really windy, and then the fires can accidentally spread. Right. Right. So. That's a good one. And humans do cause fires. And what could be the impact of a fire in an area like this? Would it have a lot of yeah. maybe big trees, big trees. old trees that also may be dying because they don't have enough water? Mm -hmm. So probably something left over like this, a snag, right? Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But if we have fires and they're burning our trees, we're going to have to get rid of, again, more sadly, trees. some more trees. So another human impact besides fires is that we often like to bring new plants or animals with us into an environment, maybe where we came from, because we say, oh, this tree really works well in an arid environment, or this tree does really well with erosion control, and so I would like to bring it to this community, and those trees could be called exotic, but they can also become invasive. So an invasive species is a species like a, like um, tamarind or salt cedar mm -hmm. that comes into the bosque in this riparian ecosystem and just takes over. Oh, like it, so it probably wipes out other native plants that we've already laid down, That's like true. the cottonwood trees. Exactly, it might take up resources that that don't allow it to, um, that don't allow the native species to get enough water, and so they they outcompete those species and are able to take over areas. 
So can you think of some examples of an invasive species? Um, so I think of the Russian olive that we have here at Whitfield and the Siberian elm, which to me, I know those aren't from here, just from their name. So, um, and I see them here at Whitfield, but you would also see them inside of these levees as well. That's still part of the riparian habitat. That's true. They, they really can spread all over. And because some of them are so drought tolerant, they can even move up to that upland area or into our neighborhood. So it's like the, the other species can't compete. It's like they're always winning the game in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And so they become um, a problem when we're trying to, you know, they can also be a fire hazard, like we were talking about fires earlier. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems that come along with our invasive species that we have to know. Okay, we have about one minute left of this video and then I'm I'm gonna say something real quick when we're done. All right, Allison, I think that we've got a pretty different looking model here in front of us. Yeah, and I think that this is a good time for our students to take a moment to take all those terms that we just talked about and think about what, how they would draw this Rio Monso, this Kane River, and add in all those components like the homes and the ranches, the acacias, the levee, and maybe demonstrate that there's less of our native species present and that there's some of those invasive species. And we don't even show as many homes as we do have in this area today. So we could really add a lot of development. Yeah. Yeah. businesses and shopping malls and all those types of things in the, yeah. this area where we live. And especially in Albuquerque, I don't see a whole lot of plants because there's no room for them anymore with all of those buildings. This is true. So when you have, yes, urbanization, when you have a lot of growth in an area, then it makes a hard for the natural environment to be present. So I'm sure you guys will notice that your river looks a lot different than the river that we created last year. All right, so you can see some of those changes. And then you guys should have all of those vocab words in the chat box. All right, everybody. So now that we've finished this activity, we want to think a little bit about what's coming up and what you're going to ask, questions you're going to answer um, before we see you again. So one big question that we would like you to think about is why is flooding so important? For this riparian ecosystem to the Rio Grande. So, if you guys can write that down, why and flooding is so important, we're going to think flooding. about that flooding. along with your why is that flooding important? What does it do? Your thing that you wrote down earlier. Next time, we're going to talk a lot about how efforts that are being, what efforts are being made to conserve and protect this area to try to make it like it used to be and think forward in how we live here and have a healthy riparian. Okay, so, all right. So I wanna respect you guys' time, it is 10.02. So um, really quickly, let me just go ahead and uh, go over your assignment and then you guys can check out. If you wanna stay on and kind of ask me questions, um, please do so. I'm gonna be here for a few more minutes, but um, for those of you that need to check out because it is 10 o'clock, you're going to be adding to your rivers. Um, that you created to begin with. You have all of those terms. So um, I'd like you to think about three more things that weren't mentioned. And one of the big things, of course, is human impact. So we can really see how different the river is. And I'm sure you guys are all seeing that. Um, just really quick, can everyone give me a thumbs up that you had um, a good time today, learned a lot? Let me see, do we have any thumbs up? Less than one, all right. <laughs> Sweet. So there's a lot to think about. So please email me or stay on the line here if you do have questions. But again, you're going to be working off of your old models. If you need to build another model, that's fine too. You can have a whole separate model, but you're going to be adding all of those things in along with three more. And to think about for next week, you're going to be looking at that thing that you circled. That's a really big deal that you thought was a big deal. And you're going to be thinking about how you can expand on that. So what are some other um, kind of things that have to do with flooding? As we notice, this all is based around flooding. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys sign off. And Sarah, a question, real quick. 
Hold on. Oh, okay. Does anyone need the, um, I tried to get as many of the definitions in the chat as I possibly could as you were going. Um, does anyone need the chat sent to them or did everyone go through it? Yeah, Lila. Okay, Lila. I will, um, I will send all the definitions that are in the chat along as well. That way, um, if you didn't get to write them down, we can, you can have them. So I'll make Thank sure I you. get that. Yeah, no problem at Sorry, all. Sorry, I'm a slow writer. It's totally <laughs> fine. I actually, I'm a slow typer. And so what I was doing is every time one popped up, I took a picture of it with my phone so that I would have it and I could type out the directions. So, yeah. you know, that's, or and, type and out I'll the definition. Give y'all a follow-up email and I'll try to remember all of those terms in there and link to this as well as the video. Yeah, I was going to say, so, plus you'll have the recording. So you could always go back and look at it too, Layla, but I already typed them up so I will send them to you no worries okay you're welcome well thank you all so much before you check out it is I'm having the time of my life with you and so I'm so excited to see what you guys uh, add to or come up with for next week I'm so blown away and I just am already excited you guys have a fabulous weekend please reach out and I'll be reaching out about your homework so if there's any confusion you will get an email from me and feel free to stay on um, but you're welcome to check out now it is 10 minutes. and i don't even understand how we're going to choose a winner for who made the most creative i know right because we're still doing it so yeah. Yeah, yeah we're gonna have to be thinking about that sarah and i will uh, discuss that so anyway if you have questions please stay on um we're going to be here for a few more minutes so um but if you need to go ahead and chime out and enjoy